Hey guys, my name's Sean. I like long walks on the beach. I'm a cancer. I like sweets, cake, cookies, ice cream. Uh, I have a little bit of a belly. Uh, if you're into that, call me. Uh, welcome to Smartless. Smart. Will, when we were chatting yesterday, you were on your walk. Yeah. And Jason, I know I know if you've ever called Will on his walk, but it's all uphill. Yeah. And it's <laughs> so um so wait, what's what's going on? What are you doing tonight? <laughs> that whole time. I'm sorry. And I was like, just call me when you're done. <laughs> no, but it's a great way. What ends up happening is it's a great way for me to stay out of my head because it is Ooh, a, a tough walk. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh wow, well, I'm halfway done. What do you guys what do, what do you guys talk about? What was what's on the phone yesterday? Yeah, what we were doing. I was, I was we, doing that night. We were, we were talking about what he's doing that night, and about I was asking him if he was going on that trip that everybody's going on next week to see that thing in that place. Oh right, you mean tomorrow? No, is it tomorrow? Oh, it's Friday. Yeah, sorry, tomorrow that you guys are all doing. You can say what it is. Why not? Yeah, it's to go see uh, you two and at, at that new sphere thing, and, and you guys are all going. Sean's not. Are you Sean? Not going. JB, Sean's not going. And then I was like feeling guilt about it a little bit because <clears throat> i don't know and uh well you just got back from london you know yeah, you just got back. you got a bunch more sleeves to cut off your liverpool t-shirts um you're gonna be busy <laughs> this weekend this is an old t-shirt is it noted. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, is Does it? Justin know that it's missing mm -hmm. yet, or? I only do it when I'm doing, when I'm on, like, my, my walk or working out. Do and, what? Uh, Cut sleeves? Wear a sleeveless. Yeah, just because I get so hot. Yeah, yeah. Well, you Alessandra are. is so it's amazed by how much. Specifically on your biceps? Yeah, it gets. <laughs> <laughs> hot guns on your hot, walk. Hot guns. I'm going to make a t-shirt for Will does hot guns. <laughs> I knew, guns you know hot. What? Can I just tell you something? I was about to, I was walking down the stairs to come down to, to set up to do this record. And Alessandra goes, what are you, what are you doing? And I go, oh, I'm going for my walk. She goes, but don't you, are you doing smartless? I go, yeah. And then she goes, mm. and I was like, fuck, yeah, you're right. I might take some heat. But then I was like, I'm you know, already right. pot committed, so fuck it. And I <laughs> and knew And it'd be it good for the happen. opening. I know. Oh, Vegas. Oh, see, you would be great at Vegas. Pot Can I wear this to Vegas, do you think? <clears throat> I'm very excited to see the whole sphere. Thing. I know. It's going to be I know cool. I am, too. I, I, it's going to be cool. And I wasn't asked to go, but I would love to go. Well, you've got six weeks. They're doing a six-week residency right, I'll there. I'll Yeah, I'll go. You know? Sean, maybe you and, uh, you and me and Scotty and uh, Alessandra will go. We'll go for, like, we'll zip in and out. Yeah. Fine. For the day. Just the day. Just the day. Well, we have yeah. to go. At, it's at night. Oh, well, we'll go. We'll, well, we'll come back that night. I don't know night. if you two's doing matinees. Do either one of you guys like? Uh, <laughs> like do you guys? Do you guys uh, like the tables? Are you gamblers? I love it. I live for it. Really, Sean likes to gamble. Sean likes to gamble. What? What's your game? Roulette and blackjack. His Roulette. game is losing money. <laughs> don't, you, don't you remember JB when we did that, in, the, the card money. game with uh, Kyle Gass and those guys back in the day, and, and Jack Black and those guys? And the first time Sean came to the game, we we had been doing it for like a month or two, and then Sean comes in, and Sean just was like constantly going, "I'm all in, I'm all in." Yeah. And then, this is like 20 years ago, and he won like fifteen hundred dollars, and then and he was didn't like, quite oh and then he goes, he goes, "Oh my god, it's late, I gotta go," and everybody's like, "You're not fucking going anywhere." <laughs> <laughs> tried to win and then walk away. It never came back. Room. I know. Yeah. He tried. Uh, roulette. Boy, that's... Um, I like roulette, too. Yeah. Do you? It's kind of... I thought only people that, like, uh, take cruises uh, yeah. play roulette. Who? Craps is, craps is great. People that I, take I, cruises play roulette and slot machines, right? I hate losing money, though. I, I don't really like to gamble that much. Because the <clears> roulette... <throat> yeah, I love it. I, I tell yeah. you what's not a gamble... Uh oh, nice, oh, nice yeah, segue. This, this, here comes like the, the segue. Guess. I tell you what's not a, se a gamble is is our guest today. I am profoundly excited about our guest. I have been a massive, massive fan of this person's work for a long, long, long time. Is in fact almost as long as I can remember. Not quite, but almost as. This is a uh, this is a true artist in my view. Um, somebody who is, I think, not only created so much incredible music over the years, but also has inspired so much incredible music. And I know that from reading from what other people say about him um, and what he, what he has done. You know, people sort of try to, at first were saying that they were the first kind of really great American post-punk band. Um, I like to think that they are the first 
really great, and probably without embarrassing him, f really gr first great sort of indie band in a way. Uh, this is somebody who is... <clears throat> just in his own right, a great artist, a visual artist, a photographer, a filmmaker, but also an incredible songwriter, singer, band member, just all around great American icon. You guys, it's none other than R.E.M.'s Michael Stipe. No oh my way. God. I was oh just thinking about him the God. other day. No way. Michael, reveal yourself. There Hello. he is. Hey, guys. Oh wow. my God, Michael this Stipe. so weird. I was this just thinking, I think yesterday or the day before, like, we got to try to get Michael Stipe on this show. No <laughs> shit. I swear to God. Oh my God, I'm a huge wow. fan. Good morning. Well, right back. I'm a huge fan of each of you guys as well, Thank so you. I'm really oh happy to be God. here. So kind. Great to meet you, really? man. Thank you. For, good I know, one. Good one. I know. Real good one. I've been, I've been, um, I often uh, uh, listen to a lot of your music, uh, Michael, from over the years. And, of course, in the last few days, in anticipation of, of meeting you, I've been listening to a lot and yeah. really introducing my teenage sons uh, to, like, this morning waiting <laughs> for the bus, in fact. And um, we were listening to uh, we were listening you to should, Fall. You should buy a car, Will. I know. You know it's it's <laughs> I know. time. It is true, but I like the bus. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I just, uh, you know... <sighs> It, like I, I started going down memory lane for you, and I can't imagine what that's like for you as as, I, as people start to talk to you about the sort of, you know, the entire catalog of music that you've created over the years. Um, do you, and I've, I, I've asked people this before, do you feel, um, I don't know, do you feel the, the, the sort of the weight of this, this sort of breadth of, of work that you've created? Uh, is that something that occurs to you? Do you understand it? Can you appreciate it without, you know, as much as you're comfortable talking about that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, I always love it when people walk up to me and say, you know, this or that song really meant something to me at this point in my life, and thank you for being there. And, you know, it's all it's really always about the music. And um, But I feel like it's my job, you know, moving forward in time to to be um, graceful about that when it, when it, when it happens. Um, sometimes people also just don't like me, and that, that's okay too. Um, <laughs> I don't know anybody. Well, we get we have. A lot uh, I live in New York, so I get you know. It's not like LA. It's like you, people tell you what they think, and sometimes they yell it from across the street. But uh -huh. and so you get that too. Uh, but let's start at the top. I, I I like the I like the I like the sleeveless look. Will, thank you for having me on. I got the memo, so I wore red, but I didn't take the sleeves off. So I'm sorry for that. It's well, not too late. We, yeah, we it's can wait. not too late. And I'll see you guys in Las Vegas because I got a I got an invitation nice. to come. Oh, you, oh that's so, great. Are you going? Oh, I can't wait. Well, I, I have to figure out exactly when. So maybe we can, maybe we can. Uh, uh, you guys can carpool. coordinate that afterwards. I'll pick you, but, I'll pick you up in uh, Will's bus. We'll <laughs> I am coming to I am coming to the West Coast soon, which is I'm, I'm kind of allergic to Los Angeles, so it's going to be, uh, you know. We can hold your hand at at a, at a nice you. dinner. That's yeah, great. come Thank and have dinner with week. us, man. I'm a we're tra well. I'm a transplant. I, I lived in New York for over 20 years. I've really only been here full time for 10 years, I guess, almost. Um, so I get it, uh, and it is. It's always an adjustment. I met, I spent years like living in New York and then working out here. Remember JB when we were doing our thing and I was like every weekend I would go home. Yeah, I'd be like I gotta get back to New York. Mm -hmm. um, so I when get we were, when we were doing our thing, isn't that sweet? <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Uh, but Willie, you couldn't you couldn't imagine living in New York full time again right now, could you? I you know I, I don't know I, I I ended up I ended up I don't know if I'd say falling in love with LA but I ended up being like okay and once I had kids it kind of changed my my perspective, um, but then you know I spent a fair bit of time back there especially in the summer, um, and uh, I don't know I could Michael could you ever imagine living out in LA full time? I did live there for uh, a couple of years in the early nineties. That was really fun, and then um, the earthquake came, and my place got <laughs> my place got condemned and flattened. No way! And um, and so I moved into Hollywood, and I lived actually I lived out of the Chateau Marmont for for a couple of years um, wow. as as my so second that's a home. Different earthquake. Wow. Yeah, that's a different uh, altogether uh, yeah. situation. But it was really fun then. It was really like it was still really shabby and and yeah. cool, and reality TV hadn't happened yet, so uh -huh. things were a little more tolerable. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, Michael, pardon my pardon my ignorance. I, I I know nothing. I live in a hole. I'm under a rock. Um, I was a singer in a band called REM for 32 years. <laughs> yes. That's yes. how people most know me yes. is from my voice. Yes. Um, 
Yeah, um, but I've also worked in other things. Okay. But with 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 the well deserved uh, compliments um, that, that that Will was giving you, uh, so in in reference to that incredible body of of work and and and, and creativity and forward thinking and and pushing, uh, teaching us all how to like enjoy stuff that's a little bit more challenging. Where are you pointing <laughs> that today? Um, what what are, what are we what are you excited about pointing that incredible talent at? today my own work yeah um yeah well it's multi-directional right now as we sit here talking i'm putting together a show of artwork that's that's going to debut in december in milan at yeah. the ica milan which is for me th really super exciting because it's the first um institution show that i've ever done and the largest show i've done in, in europe so uh -huh. that's super exciting it's as a painter and, no, good Lord, I'm the worst painter on earth. I mean, really, really bad. I established that when I was 20 years old in art school uh, at the University of Georgia. Uh, I, I, I tried philosophy. That was really uninteresting to me. I couldn't wrap my head around those kind of concepts. I tried English lit. I loved it, but I was really a terrible student. And so then I finally wound up at the art school, which is where I belonged, because that's where all the really cool kids were. And that's mm -hmm. where you got laid, and that's where you sat around and, you know, drank espresso and figured out <laughs> what the world should look like instead of what it did look like in 1980. Uh -huh. And, um, yeah, so, no, you I'm a terrible a painter. Yeah, sculpture, sculpture pieces. I'm working in concrete and plastic, oh, wow. and, and plaster. That's so cool. And then, um, and then a lot of photographs because I take a ton of pictures. And I, I kind of, I've never kept a journal or a diary, but I do. I have consistently taken photographs my entire life to kind of remember, like, wow, I met that guy there, or we had that lunch or dinner, and and yeah. th this is when I visited Lithuania, and that's what it looks like. And I love brutalism and whatever it goes on yeah. and on. But wow. that's funny you say that you never kept a diary, and yet you did, in a sense, as you pointed out, you have the you have this sort of um, years of photographs that you've taken over time that kind of document your w moving through the world, and also you have all these great songs that are also representative. I think probably again, I don't want to put words in your mouth. M representative of of where you were at at various points in your life, in w how you viewed things potentially. Yeah, I mean, it certainly details my political activism and my kind of coming out of, uh, like, you know, a kind of political, poli like, activist dark place into, like, seeing the light and seeing, like, who we were as as Americans uh, to the rest of the world and then and then trying to respond to that or react to that. Uh, but 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 I, I've never been an autobiographic writer. I mean, I, I had this conversation with, of all people, recently, Patti Smith, and we're talking about uh, writers who are essentially autobiographic writers, and then those who are not. And I, I tend to fictionalize, like, everything that goes into the, the words that I write for songs. So as a lyricist, there's maybe, like, I'm not kidding, like, eight songs in the whole canon of R.E.M. and other stuff that I've done outside of that uh, that actually are very, very, very personal to me. Oh. The rest of it is a lot of imagination. Oh, wow, that's and, cool. And, and Patti Smith was a, if I'm right, not mistaken, was a big influence on you early on, even before you started R.E.M. Is that right? Like, you were... You were just like really obsessed with her and, and would just, and, and I don't know if obsessed is the right thing, but. No, obsessed is not a bad word. I mean, I, I just, I, I, I bought and listened to Horses the day it came out. I was 15 years old. Wow. And I decided then and there that that's what I was going to do. It was, you know, I was 15. It was really a, a naive choice. Um, <laughs> but, but, I, but I, you know, it, it manifested four years later. I was still a teenager when I started R.E.M., and um, and, uh, and 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 we went on from there. I was in, I was insanely ambitious, and um, and I knew what I didn't want to do, which was hold down a regular job. Right. And are <laughs> you? Know, we, are you? We get that. But yeah. I, sorry, can I just say just yeah. about that time really quickly, Michael? Um, you you touched on it before. You know, starting REM when you were a teenager, and you were at the University of Georgia, um, and you met. Um, Peter Buck and Mike Mills and Bill Berry there in in right. Athens, and you guys created REM, and your first single. I think was Radio Free Europe that came out a couple of years before your first actual record. Right. Um, right. I li you know it's funny I, l I listened to and it's not hard to find just that first that original recording of uh, Radio Free Europe and what really astounds me what I love about it is from the moment you guys start it, it immediately Mike Mills bass Bill Berry's drums. Um, uh, Peter Buck's guitar and your vocals feel like you guys are shot out of a cannon. This is your yeah. introduction to the world. And yeah. there's something really fantastic and youthful and exuberant about that sound that I really, the more I read about you guys and where you came and how you formed the band, and then you re-listen to that song, you you guys were, there was, there's so much in those first 
30 wow. seconds of that song, man. Thank you. Before yeah. the singer starts. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, no. We, it, was, it was a combination of like, you know, uh, uh, like it, it was really just abject fear. And then, and then uh, again, like this ab absurd, like this is what we're doing. Let's do it. But it's the confidence of youth too, right? I mean, it's that exactly, kind of... Exactly, yeah. I mean, I did, there, 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 there aren't words to that song. I was just making sounds that, that felt emotional. And, and that carries over to the whole first album. You know, I, 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 really, I really was just singing feeling. I wasn't singing words or, or narratives until really the second or third record. Yeah, they talk about that. Was, and again, was, that, was it Life's Rich Pageant that you first felt that turning point or... I'm trying to think which record it was. That was the fourth album. That was in 1986, I think. And then the one before that is um, uh, Fables of the Reconstruction or yes. Reconstruction of the Fables. And that's where I was writing. I was, I was, I started um, fictionalizing the lives of people around me to try to to try to pull myself out of. You know, I, I realized that I realized then that my voice was quite powerful and meant a lot to people. But but I also I wasn't um, really singing about anything. So I figured I needed to sing about something. <laughs> uh, so I did the most obvious thing, which is look around and f like, oh, that guy's interesting. How can I, how can I tell his story? And then I would, I would, I would exaggerate everything to, uh, to create, you know, some moment of epiphany for the chorus, or, or to, 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 to make, you know, ne in, in the words of Peter Bach, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. Right. So <laughs> as a lyricist, I was able to do that. As a storyteller, he's much better than I am. But, uh, but you wrote one of the great lyrics, I think, in, in Fall on Me, which is, um, huh. a feather hits the ground before the weight can leave the air. And I told that to my son, my almost 15-year-old today, and he literally went, wow. <laughs> like, he, he, it really hit him. It's one of the great lyrics that I've, that I've always just adored. I don't know. There's something about, there's something so magical about that idea to me. Can I pop your bubble, Will? Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it, it was, uh, it had to do with gravity and, and, and mass. And it was, uh, it was an actual, um, experiment. I think they dropped a pound of feathers and a pound of, what is it, iron? Or what is it in the lyric? I don't remember, but a something heavy and then something not heavy, but they dropped an equal amount off of the Tower of Pisa, I believe, and, and to see if they would land at the same time. Oh, shit. Well, and That's where that lyric comes from. I don't think that actually blows your... It did blow it? my mind. Yeah, yeah, There's something about it. I, I don't know, but even just as, a, as an idea, like of using it in a song, for me, I find it very, uh, very poetic and very kind of, I don't know, romantic or something. There's something... It He's really a very easy anyway, lay, that's a, Michael. That's a, <laughs> I'm a cheat date. Uh, if you, yeah, if you want romance, you're barking up the right tree. The, well, I'm a, I'm a little bit sentimental, and I'm a little bit. Uh, yeah. so, Michael, is there is there uh, is there any uh, draw for you to uh, continue communicating and and being creative uh, in the musical space uh, anymore, or are you finding, you know, all of the the sort of the itches being scratched in other places? I can't believe I'm talking to the three of you guys. Well, I'm just going to start there because I'm such a big <laughs> fan of each of you. And this is really it's such an honor to be on the show. But um, I have 75 things I want to tell you as a fan as soon as you answer this question. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, actually, thank you for asking. I, I started with the show in Milan. That's happening. Um, yeah. That opens in December. It's up for three months. I'm really excited about it, and I'm absolutely fucking terrified. And so I know that I'm doing something right. Well, I'm going to do a big Google search as soon as we're done with this and take a look at all this stuff. I can't. You're not going to find much, but I can. No? I can. It, it'll. I think. It, I think I know when you guys are broadcasting this, so I can tell you the name of it. The title is. Wait for it. I have lost, and I have been lost, but for now I'm flying high. That's the title <laughs> wow. of the show. Right. That's great. Wow. Um, I love that. But I'm also I'm also working on a solo album, and uh, oh, it's a great. bit embarrassing because I started this when I was 19, and I'm now you know Methuselah. Uh, I'm, I've, be, I've become Father Time as time marched on, and but I'm doing my first solo record, and uh, it's about half done. That's so. Cool. Can I ask you what what sort of what sort of world that is in as far as instrumentation goes and and band size and all that? Not stuff? what you might expect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I love electronic music and ambient music. Opens with a sitar. <laughs> it does not. <laughs> um, um, that would be great, though. God, that's a good idea. I yeah. knew you. I knew you were going to say ele more electronic. I knew it. Sorry, keep going. Really? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I really. You know, some of the stuff that we it was did, the shades. Uh, these are actual glasses that I need. Uh, I can't. I, really, I can't we see all you without them. Thank they're, you. They're so. Red. I should be wearing. So them. more electronic, huh? Because you, you, I mean, REM was 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 so instrumental. Yeah. I'm right. I, I, I realized really when I started writing. 
on my own and composing because I never wrote music. I always responded to what those guys gave me. And uh, oh, wow. I'm speaking to Peter Buck, Mike Mills, and Bill Berry when he was a part of the band. And and um, so I always just responded to their music. And as a, as a you know, I, I, heard, I hear harmony everywhere. It's 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 actually a, a, it's actually a little bit of a problem. Um, <laughs> and um, and and then I and then I and then I I, I would hear harmony and and melody, and then I would I would compose the words to that. Uh, but I'd never composed music myself, so I started that only to find out that it's really a lot fucking harder than you think it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm doing okay. But I knew right away, you know, that I couldn't do some ersatz version of R.E.M. I, I, don't, I don't need electric guitar and bass and right. drums uh, because it's just going to be a, a pathetic comparison to right. being a part of, in my opinion... And I'm I'm going to toot my own horn here, but I was a part of you know one a of the greatest band. bands of all time, and yeah. Yeah. and those guys. That's I, true. So so I, I'm looking for a different a, a different arena to place my voice. In. Are you going to do the all of, all of it yourself? Like, are you doing playing all the keyboard, like all the electronic stuff yourself? Or are you? No, I can't play a single thing. I, I I'm okay on cube on I'm I, I start everything starts with synthesizer and then uh, and drums. Uh, yeah. So it's 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 pretty beat heavy. I mean, about half of the work is is you know basically disco. I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, no kidding. Oh, thanks. This is going to be so cool. Super excited about. It. Yeah, there's some really un unexpected things that are coming uh, lyrically. Uh, I'm I'm going into some territory that is actually deeply frightening. Uh, but but again, if if I'm terrified, then I know that I'm doing something right, and I'm yeah. absolutely terrified. So that's good. I think that that's the greatest place to be, I think. Uh, I, don't, you, I don't know how you guys feel about it. Th those moments, you know, you've had those moments where you're doing something, you're, or you're taking a, I don't know, you're taking a risk or you're out on a limb, and, and you're like, God, I'm so fucking scared, and yet I think this is mm -hmm. where I should yeah. be because if yeah. I'm comfortable, then... Right on the edge of what you think you can handle is a yeah. good spot to be. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, oh my you gosh. Ma you mentioned, you mentioned um, that right now. harmony, and, st and uh, one of the things that for me was one of the real hallmarks of R.E.M. And I agree with you, one of the great American bands. And and anybody wants to challenge me, I'll meet you online. Um, <laughs> but 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 you one of the one of the real hallmarks of of REM was was the incredible harmonizing uh, you did, especially you and Mike Mills. Uh, I, I I challenge anybody to find something that's more, I don't know, musically pleasing than listening to you and Mike Mills harmonize yeah, with each other great. on songs like Like Fallen Me or on uh, Superman, which I didn't realize was a cover. And I saw the video of you guys with the original writer back in eighty six from in Illinois where you brought him on. Um, <laughs> but also one of the great Har like harmonizing, I, it's just yeah, mind blowing, man. Yeah. And yeah. well, that's Mike. That's really that's Mike. I mean, Mike has a Mike. Mike and Bill are incredibly musical. But and but but Peter but, is encyclopedically, you know, knowledgeable about music. I'm not. I'm a complete. Like I really don't know the first thing about music. And I, I hate to break it to you, <laughs> Michael. I'm gonna interrupt you. I hate to break it to you. You're really good. And so so as uncomfortable Thank as that you. may be, send him really, some really, REM albums. Will I? I will. And and. But what what would you what would you what was that first moment like yeah. when you and, and Mike and, and Bill potentially did harmonize? Like, how did that come up? Do you remember that? I remember the moment when vocal arrangement became a concept that I was like, "Oh, holy shit! That's like that's a thing." Like, I knew about musical arrangement, but we were working in Memphis in 1986, and uh, we were in a studio that was a kind of mostly country music. But in the other studio was Mavis Staples and her producer, Reverend Al Green. And, um, and then this guy who I saw all the time at the coffee machine. So finally I was like, are you, are you a musician? Are you a singer? What do you do? And he said, oh, I, I do vocal arrangement. Mm. And it hit, like, it's like this like, seismic blast like took my face off and I was like, fuck, you can arrange vo like vocals, you can arrange vocal. Did I say that right? Did I mess it up? <laughs> no, he yeah. was the he was the vocal arranger for Mavis Staples and Reverend Al Green. And I was like, wow. And so then I was like, hey, I have an idea, I have an idea, I have an idea. And Mike would sing most of them. But eventually the band were making fun of me because I was I was doing like all these harmonies that were essentially the Beatles. And I, uh, I, I famously or kind of inf infamously d didn't grow up with the Beatles, so I loved the Monkees and I loved the Archies <laughs> and I loved the Banana Splits. But I was a kid Banana and splits. I didn't have an older brother or sister who really loved music. And yeah. and I have an older sister who I love immensely, and she's got incredible taste. But at the time, you know, we were no one listened to the Beatles in my household. So 
Same. Anyway, I wound up kind of recreating something Same. that I, no, it was it was always in the background for me. Wow. But Mike is Mike is the Mike's the secret sauce there. Mike but is you really, guys were but, but you were doing it before you knew what you were doing. I, I guess yeah. is my point. Well, you, they knew. He knew. I right. didn't know. But didn't. but I also love your 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 candor because uh, you know that thing where people go like. Um, They'll reference like a song or or like a, a, a film or a book or something, yeah. and they go, yeah, and, and they just go, yeah, 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 I know. And you're like, no, you don't fucking know. And I love that yeah. you were just like, I didn't know the Beatles. I didn't listen to them in that way. And I think a lot of people have revisionist history when they talk about their own story. Yeah. Uh, I don't even I know how to spell it or why they were called. The, I, I thought it was. Sean the, just found out why the Beatles were called the Beatles. What was that, Sean? Spelled, uh, spelled B E A. Yeah. 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 I that thought was it was a shocker. I didn't know him. it was the, like the beat. They're making a beat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thing, Don. I yeah. thought it was yeah. the That's answer. a funny thing to not know. That's why yeah, it I is know. a funny it's thing to not know. We have a shock in hanging out with this guy, Michael. <laughs> it's a really funny thing <laughs> yeah. to not know. <laughs> yeah. And he thought uh, Kennedy was assassinated in D.C. <laughs> so um, he did. it's just, it's a fountain. He did, really. he did Michael. We I went did. on this tour and we went and. Um, <laughs> and we walked where we drove by, like the Washington Monument or something, JB? Yeah, and he said, uh, huh, isn't this just about where Kennedy, as he's looking over both shoulders, Kennedy was assassinated right around here. Oh, and right. Jason goes, no, that was in Dallas, you he's fucking f- idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Dick. Welcome to America. Um, um, hey, Michael, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dingo. No, no, you go, Jay. No, Sean, it's your turn because I know we're all. Oh, yeah, I can't wait for this. Michael, go hi, yeah. I'm Sean, and I'm a <laughs> huge fan of yours. You know, when I was uh, in high school, you basically were one of the... You know, we had Depeche Mode on as well. Failing out of high school. Just high school. And high school, yeah. <laughs> 88 was the first time I heard... Uh, oh, my God. The album's so embarrassed. In 1988? The album that came out in 88. It would be Green, probably. Green, right. Green. Yeah. I know yes. every song, every, every word. And so... Um, Anyway, so you, along with Depeche Mode and all these... Other, but like Tori Amos and 10,000 Maniacs and all these other groups that I absolutely loved. I, I was like a... I was a music major, so I try to listen to as much music as possible. And right. and you were part of my defining, you know, young childhood, young young adulthood. You were a major in the music army. It's yeah, it's a it's a big deal to meet you, and uh, and you mean a lot to me. So uh, that said, I have just a couple things I want to say. <laughs> that said, I have some notes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one is I sat right next to you with our friend Jimmy Burroughs in a play that Woody Harrelson was starting starring in, and I sat right next to you. And I don't think you knew who I was or whatever. And you had glitter on your face. And I thought, he's the coolest guy in the world. Yeah. And I was so nervous. I never said hello. So I'm glad Aww. I'm saying hello now. <laughs> and I was like, Jimmy, I said to Jimmy, I was like, that's fucking Michael Stipe sitting right next to me. I was freaking out. But anyway, and then talking about Harvard. Where, where, tell me, tell, I always need to know place first. Where, what city was that in? New York City on Broadway. York, okay. Woody Harrelson was starring. Woody, what play okay. was it? I don't remember the name. Gosh, it was really years and years and years ago. I go into blackout with like weddings, funerals, and plays. I afterwards, I'm like, I don't <laughs> yeah. know. I, I think yeah, I was. Jason, the Jason wakes up in a blackout. Yeah. Jason can't, Jason can't remember <laughs> anything. We you can we can talk about something we did last year, and Jason go, I was there. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Um, but anyway, so the other thing was harmonies. What Will was saying, you know, on uh, something is out of reach. That ten thousand maniac song that you sang back up on. That's when I was, they came, I was on the entertainment committee in, in college. Sure. We'd get all the bands. Right. I would try so hard to get R.E.M. to come. But we got 10,000 <laughs> Maniacs to come. And I was practicing piano in the, in the rehearsal room where there's like 10 pianos because I was a piano major. Right. And Natalie Merchant is right across from me wow. playing at college. I'm like, oh my God, because she was performing that night. So she needed to practice. And I thought, I dreamed that Michael Stipe was going to come on stage and sing harmony to that thing. But my last thing I wanted to say, but you didn't show up. <laughs> but the last thing I wanted to say was I was dating this guy and losing my religion. You know, the chorus, um, oh God, how does it go? Uh, I'm too nervous I think now. I thought I, yeah. Um, uh, 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 I think uh, there I isn't a chorus. There's not a chorus. Yeah, I try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah, I saw it. you try. I, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. I saw. I think, yeah. so I was dating this guy and we were trying to sing your harmonies, right? And I think I saw I try to try, whatever. And he couldn't do it. I stopped dating him. That'll do. Oh, good, yeah. good move, good yeah. move. Yeah. Way to go! Good. I was like, "What are you talking about? How could you not? It's just a third. It's just third. You sound like you had it pretty wired, though. Oh yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. I thought I not saw a shred of melody. <laughs> uh, anyway. Michael, am I right in remembering that you dipped your toe in uh, film producing for a I period did. there in the '90s or early 2000s? Twenty-five years. Yeah, I, I was wow. a film producer for twenty five years. Yeah. Really? I, I, yeah, I kind of stopped. Uh, what you did? You did you love it and then didn't love it, or always hated it, or miss it, loved it the whole time? 
I loved working with uh, I loved working with people in the film industry, all the creative people, but all the money people drove me up the fucking wall. Oh, yeah, and yeah. It, and it, it's just so fraught with compromise, you know, with music yeah. and with art and with photography and with all the things that I really kind of express for myself. I'm able to really be as as wrong as I want to be and completely mm. uncompromised. With film and TV, it's always a compromise. You guys know that much more than I do. And yeah. but, but that said, you know, I worked with some incredible people. I made some incredible lifelong friendships. And uh, along along uh, Woody Harrelson being one of them, we're mm. very very close. He and Laura are are I like the them. dearest people to me. We and were. Natalie, actually speaking of Natalie, I saw her perform recently in Chicago, really? New York, uh, with a symphony. Uh, oh my God. The I mean, place she's, um, too. she's incredible. Uh, uh, but yeah, I, I did. Um, I produced Being John Malkovich. Yeah, that's. I'm really proud I didn't of that. Know that. That's I incredible. I, I executive produced um, Velvet Goldmine with Todd Haynes, and um, do you talk to Todd or to Spike at all anymore? I talk to Spike all the time. We used to live across the street from each other. Oh yeah, I love Spike. He's yeah, one he's of the funniest incredible. dudes. Yeah, I met him when he was a teenager with through Jane Pratt. Actually, um, she oh was my doing God. a. She was doing a magazine called Sassy, and they had a like skateboard, like boy version of Sassy. And Spike was one of the two guys that were a part of that. So oh, he was he was a kid when I met him. I was also a kid, but anyway, such a filmmaker. Yeah, we kind of yeah. grew up together, and uh, he's amazing. And um, uh, and then my my best friend Jim McKay. Uh, that that's kind of more the the Hollywood at part of my film production was 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 much more uh, truncated than the work that I did out of New York, which was more independent film. Did you ever think about maybe scoring a film? Yeah, actually, the, the band scored uh, a film called Man on the Moon with Milos Forman. Oh, right. Oh, sure. Um, oh, based, yeah. on, based on a song that we wrote called Man on the Moon, which was yeah. about Andy, Andy Kaufman yeah. and uh, the, the comedian. And um, uh, it, kind of, it kind of brought Andy back into, as, a, as he had died and had kind of been forgotten. And um, this friend of ours brought some VHS tapes to a studio in Seattle, and we were there working, and uh, I watched the tapes, and then there was this piece of music that the band loved, but I couldn't, I couldn't find it, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. And um, I went on a long walk the last day that we were in the studio, and I wrote Man on the Moon walking around the blocks of downtown Seattle and wow, recorded that it that night, and we gave it to the record company the next day, and that was that. No, no. It's, wow. so, it's, cra it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, that really, ha that really happened. That's super nuts. <laughs> that's, that's magic. That is but crazy. I love hearing those stories when bands... I remember the story of, like, uh, reading somewhere that Paul Weller talks about re writing That's Entertainment in 10 minutes uh, coming home from the pub, and I'm like, you know, one of the jam's great songs, and, and being like, wow, that, that's amazing. Or, like, you writing Men on the Moon, a song that everybody knows, a massive hit that was so, like, and you know, and that you wrote it walking around and gave it to the record company the next day. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> but then like, someone someone heard the song, fell in love with Andy Kaufman all over again, wrote a script, and and it got into Milos's hands, and he's you know he's one of my heroes. Yeah, yeah what a filmmaker he is. And, yeah. and he yeah. he put together a great cast and 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 did a great made a great film, I think. But the the band wound up scoring that. Yeah, I want to ask you about Thomas uh, if you don't mind, and we don't have to if you don't. But my just being in a relation. Oh, that? oh yeah, my boyfriend. Yeah, I just just being in yeah. a relationship with another um, artist. Uh, <laughs> Will thought I was going to say with another man, but uh, with another artist, um, <laughs> a different uh, man. <laughs> a different uh, man. What is that like? Because you're both photographers. Obviously, he's very well respected. He's, he's much better than I am. Tell Tracy and me who Thomas is. Thomas is Thomas. His his uh, he's French. Thomas Dozel, uh, and he's a, he's an artist who works mostly in in, in photography, and okay. he's he's a master port portraitist. So he puts me to shame. And so, wow. do you guys what what are what are the the heated discussions like? Like, do you guys get into Oof. it about? <laughs> you <yeah. know? laughs> Boy, well, there's, a there's a story here. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a, it's you know, it's an ongoing saga. But but uh, you know, both of us love art, and uh, as I said, he's French, and so his you know just he has such a different uh, perspective on art and and everything growing up in France and growing up the way that he did. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and so, yeah, we really get into it, but but it's it's absolutely supportive, you know. Yeah. Uh, but he has opinions, that's for sure. <laughs> As do I. I mean, we're yeah, yeah. we we have the type of um, we have the type of relationship where we're able to say really difficult things uh, about about everything. But we're speaking here about work. Uh, we're able to say, you know what? That's not you know. You could do better, or or wow. Try again. Try again. Or do do both of you work with film or with digital photography? 
Um, he works with mostly film for the for the serious work that he's doing. We're in our first show together. Actually, not our first show together, but we're in a show together that, that's opening in Cincinnati uh, in October. It's a group show about collage. And um, I just this morning before we got on the phone, uh, he sent me the two images that he's putting up there. It's two nudes. Uh, it's a woman named Rihanna Kubik and a, a guy named Jesper Just. Uh, both very, very different, both working in art. Uh, uh, but they're this incredible, like, they're, they're, I wish you could see them, but they're these really, really stunning portraits. So he's a great portraitist along the lines of uh, Peter Hujar or, um, uh, gosh, I can't even think of who else, maybe uh, Richard Avedon. Yeah. And I, as a, I, I'm more of, I'm more of like a snapshot guy. Like, I snap pictures uh, as, as a diary, and sometimes I'll see something that catches my eye. Uh, I see things differently than regular people, and so I'm able to kind of present a different perspective. But but what he does is profoundly, really thoughtful. I want to say two things. One of the things I liked that you kind of talked about was in, in kind of getting into things and whether talking whether it's about work or in your in your personal relationship. I mm-hmm. I've just recently in the last week been talking with a friend of mine about this concept, this idea that. When a relationship, uh, if you will, uh, between two people is strong enough that it can sustain each other being able to feel free to do what they need to do and express themselves in a way that's okay. Right. And when, when it can support that, there's something really magical about that. When we can be comfortable enough to have differing opinions on things because I think so often, I don't know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I've been in places before and in relationships where it wasn't strong enough. And so that when you do kind of strike out and have a differing opinion, it, it kind of falls apart. Yeah. There's something really great about when it is strong in that way. Yeah. Well, luckily, politically, we're, we're, we're aligned and that makes, yeah. uh, that makes uh, dinner conversation much easier. We've been together a quarter of a century. So, you wow. know, we've, we've worked out the kinks. I mean, there, there's, there's not, um, you know, there's not a place where I mean, I think with, with any, you guys know this. I mean, you're, you've been, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit further down the Methuselah trail than you are, but by about ten years, I think. But, <laughs> but um, you know, you, 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 communication is everything, and if, if, if you can't, if you can't, if you don't have that, then, then you're just kind of screwed, you know. Yeah. Okay. Wait here, Michael. You like times and dates. I ran. I didn't run into you. I saw you once. It was a great. I was. 24 and I was on 7th Avenue none of it exists anymore but I was on 7th Avenue and 20 I lived at, uh, between uh, 7th and 8th on 21st Street in Chelsea for years Okay. and I saw you at this like weird restaurant I'm like what the fuck is Michael Stipe doing there and you were having coffee outside at this really and anyway it was a great sighting and I, I remember just walking by trying to be cool and going around the corner and saying to my friend I was like Holy yeah yeah on 21st I can't on picture 20, you were you were on 7th Avenue it was 1994 on 7th uh, okay there's no way you remember it um but it was like a for me a great like uh, you know, just trying to, you know, those like trying to walk cool and being like, does my walk look stupid at my walk? How do you walk? How, do, how does somebody walk normally? Just walk normally. Walk like a human person. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, that's, uh, um, that's sweet. Wait, so Michael, I have a question. How old were you when Murmur came out? Uh, 22, I think, or 21. 22. Wow. 21, which means you started writing, like you said, you started 23. writing. 23. Wait, I think, yeah, no, I'm, it's, I'm, I was born January 4th. 1960. So I'm every decade. I'm like four day. I'm four days behind. So I'm now 63. Ah. It's really so you were. To do the math. You were. Um, I was 13. So you're. I think it came out in. I think yeah. 23. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so you're 23, and it means meaning like you said, you started writing in high in high school and when you were a teenager. And so my question is because I'm always I'm always fascinated by people who, like you who. How did you get in touch with your emotional side at such a young age, such that you could feel fearless about expressing yourself through music. Like mm. most teenagers have angst and are naturally emotional anyway, yeah. but to yeah. feel safe enough to write them down and then sing uh, is a whole other level. How did you achieve that? Wow, that's a, such a good question. Maybe unanswerable. I mean, well, I, I, I love what you said earlier, Will, about Radio for Europe because that was, it was, it was you know, it was, it was fear. I mean, there was, everything was an ambition and, Audacity. There was a, there, there was it was it was all the A words except for F, which is the fear word. But we grew up in public. You know, we didn't know what we were doing. Peter couldn't play guitar. I didn't know. I didn't. It didn't occur to me that to be a singer in a band, I had to write words mm-hmm. and then sing them. Like I mean, I was like, yeah, this is great. But it, I, it, it's it's a lot of work. Um, the Ramones emerged intact. They 
they were they were like this remarkable thing that just the second you saw them or heard them, they had a sound, they had a look, they had names, they had an attitude, they had the they had they had all the photography down. Mm-hmm. They were locked from the first moment we ever saw them. REM grew up in public, and and so it took me a couple of I, I mean. <laughs> People don't believe this, but I repeat it over and over again. We were working on our second album before I realized that the bass guitar was the one that made the low sounds. <laughs> I didn't know the difference between a bass and a guitar. The that's bass really has funny. four strings on it, so that yeah. I—that's oh, so what you really why, didn't know anything. <laughs> that's how I knew that was the bass. It had four strings. But you knew you could sing. No, I didn't. I really? and I, I only. I only figured out in like it was the second to last record that we made. Well, how did you find your way into a band? Well, how yeah. how did you start the band? Did, was was is my right? Was Peter Buck? One of you was working at a record store. Was it Peter? Peter was. Yeah, yeah. He was working at a record store and used to come in and buy Patty Smith records or something. And then, you're never like, gonna, you're never going to believe this, but at that record that record store is still there. It's in Athens, Georgia, and you'll never believe who's going to be there uh, in early November. Who's that? Mickey Dolenz from the Monkees. Wow. No way. Is, has covered four R.E.M. songs and released oh, wow. them on an EP. And what? they are fucking fantastic. And he covered one of the songs that we only wrote because it's called Shining Happy People. It's very fruity. I love that song. with B-52's Kate. I love that with song. With Kate Pearson, yeah. And, I love Kate but, Pearson. But, you know, it was, that, was, that was us working out our, like, like you know, like super pop kind of yeah uh, i love kind it of bubble gum kind of bubble gum music it's because was, it, of was the that mon- on green uh oh god you're asking the wrong person i know <laughs> I, it was on one of those yeah, records if we, around if that we could find somebody in the band i love how much you don't know your own he has what we call turn the page it's fucking <laughs> rad i think it's yeah. so and rad. you know what else is rad is that you you know you mentioned the ramones had a look and everything you guys you clear had had no look Almost by 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 no. by choice, it seemed very like there's no artifice, no nothing. We're gonna plug these these instruments in, and we're just gonna sing and play music that sounds good, and it's challenging, but it's not um, uh, alienating. It's uh, especially especially. By the way, JB, think about this. Especially yeah. in a time, Michael, you can attest to this, where MTV was exploding. And no. uh, and and a lot of music was about how your video played. It wasn't necessarily yes. about your music. Yeah. And you guys were Thank you. all about the music. To me, music was music was like one of the one places that you could go and not have someone tell you what to think about, and not tell someone not like when I when I hear music. I, this is also I get a lot of stick for this, but it's really what happens when I hear good music, not bad music. When I hear good music, I see a landscape and I see a vista, and it's it for me. It's a very visual thing. Uh, and when I write, I'm like putting people in that landscape. It's like it, it make that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. I, I hear, I see when I hear. So for for MTV to come along and suddenly you're looking at like whoever you know, uh, the, the Chrissy Hind and the Pretenders, a version of what you're supposed to see when you hear this song. Yeah. It really it really robbed me of something super important yeah. to, to, as a music. So fan. what changed your mind? Yeah. Um, well, Sinead O'Connor, I, it was when I saw Nothing Compares to You that I started lip syncing. And the first song, the first, uh, mem- uh, the first video that I lip synced to, lip synced to is yeah. Losing My Religion, which was the biggest hit that we had ever had. So, it, yeah. it was, you know, the song of the summer of whatever year that was. Yeah. And, um, and, and I, I'm so proud of that song and I love the song to this I day. But I, it was, it was watching her performance, uh, that I realized, like, the, okay, this is complete artifice, but we all know that it's artifice, and you can actually be moved emotionally by watching this person perform this song, even right, though yeah. know she's lip syncing. Right. Who are your Who are your bands? I mean, who are you mentioned the the, the monkeys, etc. But like when you were, other than Patti Smith, who you also mentioned, when you were eighteen or when you were twenty five. Who are the bands that you still like? I I have like a sort of like rotating list of like ten bands that I always go back to, of, of which REM is one that like that's Thank always you. on my playlist. Always, and it's always it's you guys, and it's the Smiths, and it's Pavement, and it's like the, that's where I kind of live. You have good taste. Yeah, I'm well. Thank you. I mean, I don't know. I just like music. Not in shirts. Lot. I've, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> we yeah, like when you were bopping around the Grammys and and the MTV Awards and all that stuff. Who, which bands at that time were you kind of really excited to, to be bumping shoulders with? I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I was really excited to be meeting the actors. I'm, really? <laughs> yeah, really I'm a real fanboy in that regard. So, like, I scared the life out of Dennis Hopper uh, at one point. He, he, and I didn't mean to. I was just so excited and so jacked on adrenaline. And here, there he was. And I was like, ah, you're amazing. And I scared him. I came up behind him, you know. 
And he completely, like, he looked at me with that look of, like, Frank, you know, it was so scary. Right. I was like, ah, security. I just killed Dennis Hopper. Uh, yeah, he Frank, called security Frank on me. Frank from Blue Velvet. Yeah, he called security <laughs> on me. <sighs> Um, I, you know, I loved, I loved Elton John as a, mm. as a, as like, a, yeah. as like a, when I was like a protozoa, you know, um, uh, mm-hmm. I was maybe 13 when, um, Benny and the Jets came out and that song mm. to me, I was like, what the actual fuck is going on? What is yeah. it? Like, I couldn't, I knew even then, like, I didn't know the first thing about pop music or radio music or nothing, but I was like, this is something I've never heard before. And the same thing happened when I heard Patti Smith and then Patti, you know, uh, I knew about the CBGB scene in New York in the in the mid '70s, and all the bands that were playing there. So when each of them released a record, I was the first guy in line to buy it. So Television, mm. The Ramones, The Talking Heads, Blondie, mm. um, and then the Dead Boys, and all these other people started coming. X from from Los Angeles, oh, yeah. a place that we won't talk about. And um, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I don't I don't I don't despise LA. I just don't know who I am there. It's sure. it's, it's a real it's a real problem. We're gonna help you find yourself here. Yeah. Well, you're gonna come out here soon. I'm free on the ninth, so let's have okay, dinner. Great. We're right. gonna have dinner. Nice. Done. And and this is we're gonna change the way that you look at Los Angeles. First, you're no, about you're to meet you're about to meet the most <laughs> dynamic people you've ever met. Um, <laughs> and, and 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 they're all here on your I'm screen. Curious. And they're all here on your screen. <laughs> It's going to be incredible for you to meet us in person. It's, it's going to be so incredible. My God, what mm. will I wear? To watch <laughs> how little Jason eats and how much Sean eats will blow you away. Just <laughs> we cancel just each other out. She, yeah. And we're both the same weight. I don't know yeah. how it works. <laughs> <It's true>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you do? Because we always, what is the thing that you do that that is... Um, I don't know. The thing would that you be do surprising to, to us. That's, yeah, that, that you spend time quite, doing. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, you, you. To me, you're you are the embodiment of sophistication. What what oh. what is the what is the opposite of that? <laughs> in, in, in you're your looking life. at it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> what are you, who are you talking to? <laughs> I'm, I'm the least sophisticated person you know you've ever no, met. No, but you're but you're creating a lot of art. You've created art in so many different mediums now, and so like for guys like us that we're kind of I'm in awe of of how you do Thank that, you. and and it's really inspirational to be honest. Hearing this is not false humility. I really mean like I'm really uh, like no, yeah, of course. And I'm not, it means so much to me. I'm, but but I'm, I'm also saying it because like so. What is the thing like as Jason said that we'd be surprised to know that. You do that's that, that a simpleton you, might 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 do you know i became a really good cook through covid i think we all uh-huh. did yeah. I, I didn't bake bread um good for uh, you i play solitaire a lot solitaire um, there you go solitaire yeah. there it is yeah. uh but what about what about cooking what what's your what's your what's your go-to i'm vegan default so i uh, most of what i most of what i make uh, is vegan uh but then uh, you know i'll see a piece of turkey bacon and just shove it in my face uh-huh. and I'm, I'm not proud of that but but it does happen um, i'll shove that in my face <laughs> uh, my, michael i do want to ask you just really quickly and not not because I, I just want a quick answer but just because we haven't gotten to it yet and i don't want to take up any more of your time but you one of the great uh things that you're also known for throughout all this time and you've used your music to advance a lot of causes and things that you believe in and uh your activism is um started it was just such an early part of your uh trajectory as yeah. a person through the world yeah. um and wh- and has that continued i imagine that's continued and where is it taking you now what are the things that you're passionate about uh in in your activism i try to encourage and support you know younger generations and, and the work that they're doing. Uh, I I thought that my generation, which was, I'm really just, I think I'm about 10 years older than each of you guys. Yeah, but, yeah you're exactly but, 10 years older than me. I, I, I really thought that my generation was going to be, you know, I took a course when I was in um, seventh grade, I believe. I remember the teacher was Miss Enoch, E-N-O-C-H. Sure. Uh, and the entire year's course was about environmental science. And it was about how, uh, it was about pollut- pollutants and uh, energy sources and how my generation was going to be the one to lift us out of this darkness uh, and to move forward into this progressive uh, future where, you know, we're not dependent on, 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 on oil or gasoline and, and the air is clean and the oceans are, you know, the, 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 the plastic situation that we have now never existed in 19-whatever it was, 1971. Mm-hmm. And I really believe that. I mean, I'm that naive, uh, you know, uh, uh, but but moving forward, you know, there there is that energy that youth has uh, and audacity uh, yeah. to to actually pick something up and and place it somewhere else. 
we find ourselves faced with much more than environmental disasters right at the top of the list. But there are so many things as Americans that we have. Um, you know, I just think we're like, we have really shitty karma as a country. <laughs> and we, yeah. that has to be addressed in some way. And, and we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing that happen in, in real life right now. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm very concerned for the future, but that said, I'm, I'm an incredible optimist. And so, yeah, there's, I mean, I don't know what I, it's, it's quite scattershot, but I've, I've been and the band were, uh, and continue to be actually as, as a non, we're, we're no longer together uh, for about 11 years, but we continue to be a business and, uh, and we support and encourage, uh, as, as, as much progressive, um, uh, activism as 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 we can. Mm. Think about it, man. Uh, I mean, we we have. If there's one thing I want to say to this younger new generation is, the only place you can start is a feather hits the ground before its weight can leave the air. That's right. And when you can fucking understand that, we can solve fucking everything. <laughs> Michael Stipe, we have absolutely monopolized your way too much of your time. I yes, talk I to think you forever. we're out of time. Oh, Sean, very, <laughs> very nice. Very good one, Sean. Guys, very nice, that's Sean. why I'm here. <laughs> there you go. What an absolute honor and thrill to meet you. Huge uh, honor. Again, yeah. just been such a fan of yours for so long. So much of your music I, I right back. played through various stages of my life. I can think of them vividly yes. and how much you your are, music You and your me. voice and your yeah. songs are part of my soul. Same here. Yeah, same. Well, you guys, you guys kept me you, you guys kept me going, along with Team America, I think. You guys kept me going <laughs> on the tour America. bus. For uh -huh. for tour after tour with my former band, so the okay. the, the the gratitude is returned. Thank you very well, much, and thank you. I'm really pleased to have been here today. today. Yeah, thank yeah. thanks very much. Thank you, Michael. Right. We're gonna see, we're gonna see you for dinner. I'll see you for dinner. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Done. We're coming. Okay. We're, right. we're coming to get you. Thank you, Michael. See you, buddy. All the best. Enjoy your day. Bye. 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 Well done, Willie. Thanks. That's uh, wow. It's just so weird. I truly was. I was listening to an REM song in the car uh, yesterday or the day before, and I was like, oh. Perfect guest. Yeah. Perfect I just guest. bought like three of his albums because I, I just the other day on digital because I never had them. I've only had them yeah. vinyl. Oh, yeah. I, I, they are one of those bands for me, REM, where I have owned them on vinyl and on cassette and on CD yeah, and had on had digital. Like, I've owned them in so many, every available format because you want to keep, you know, listening uh, yeah. to their music wherever you are. I just... Yeah, he's. Uh, I miss. I miss his 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 brain, his creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, is his the, the subversive sort of uh, take on things through music uh, and sound and lyric. I those think those are the kind of people that we need. Who yeah. being our pops or not not pop stars? I mean, I guess yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, pop music is so big and vibrant right now, and and God bless them. But I, I feel like we're missing a little bit of a counterbalance there. Or maybe I just need to look. For no, it I think you're right. I think that we need rock stars and and musicians who are creating music that's you know that's so important, who also have something to say, who are uh, you know, you know that that have some depth to it and have some meaning and. and yeah, it's is, like all hands on deck right now to try to uh, trigger yeah. um, uh, um, better thought. Yeah. Yeah. Sean, you've had any thoughts triggered yet? No, he's just working on buys over there. He's probably no, doing I a Google I, search I, I right now. Him. Rhymes with <laughs> buy. Um, he is read. He is. Resubmit. <laughs> no, uh, I um hey, that was that I like all the all the music people you both bring on. It's so cool. Like it's yeah. no no, yeah. I don't don't have any. He's, he's, he's going. He's going. I do. I think like I'm so surprised. You know, I fucking fell out of my chair when Depeche Mode came on. I fell out of my chair when uh, when Michael Stipe just came out and all these people come on. And well, I'm falling out of my chair with, uh, it's, it really is, I'm so, I was sitting there watching and I was like, I can't believe, believe I'm talking we're talking. This I know, podcast I is such a gift, just I know. selfishly it's, for the three of us. You get to meet all these people. Listener, it, it's all your fault. Thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to sit here and yeah. hopefully we're asking some of the questions that you would ask if yeah. you were trapped in an elevator with one of your heroes too, yeah. like, like we are for an hour each day and it's just such a gift we could that we talk can talk to, to these for, folks. We can talk we, for hours and forgive us sometimes because I know that people are like, 
oh, you know, you didn't, you guys didn't let him finish, or whatever. We're we're fans as well, so we we trip over ourselves. I know that I yeah. do. Sometimes I'm not yeah, as we we fight for the next question. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I'm like, I just we only have him for an hour, and I just want to tell him how great I think he is uh -huh. and stuff. And people are like, oh god, how annoying. And like I know that's how I. That's okay, why I was like, I gotta tell him all this stuff. I ran into you. I could I sing this song. Blah, 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 yeah. And this song means and this song means. I could go on and on about it, and 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 we could go on and on with him, but because it's always so sad to say. Oh, Good. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Well, let's harmonize like how the are you? Okay. Good. Bye. Bye. Hey, we did it. Smart. Smartless is 100% organic and artisanally handcrafted by Rob Armjarf, Bennett Barbaco, and Michael Granteri. Smartless. Smartless is full of celebrity guests and laughs. But if you want something more eerie, try the new podcast, Ghost Story, about my investigation into a murder-suicide in my own family. Ghosts aren't real. At least, that's what I've always believed. Sure, odd things happened in my childhood bedroom, but ultimately, I shrugged it all off. That is, until a couple of years ago, when I discovered that every subsequent occupant of that house is convinced they've experienced something inexplicable too, including the most recent inhabitant who says she was visited at night by the ghost of a faceless woman. It just so happens that the alleged ghost haunting my childhood room might just be my wife's great-grandmother, who was murdered in the house next door by two gunshots to the face. Ghost Story, a podcast about family secrets, overwhelming coincidence, and the things that come back to haunt us. Follow Ghost Story on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge all episodes ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus.